Hey guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Bowes here. One of the most common questions I get from prospective owners of my baby boas is how is that boa's temperament? Having worked with many of the different locality boas, I can tell you that there are definitely specific behavioral characteristics that are associated with each type of locality boa, although each animal, of course, is an individual with its own personality. So today I want to go over several of the different locality boas that have distinct personality traits, distinctive behavioral traits that are associated with this particular locality. Um, hopefully this information might be useful to you if you're just looking to get a locality boa and you want to know more about how it might behave once you get it home and once you are keeping it as a pet. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel. I have a lot of great ideas for more videos about keeping and breeding in boas in captivity, so subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes of this show. In general, most people who are looking to get a pet boa want an animal that's not going to be aggressive. They want a pet they can take out and handle and show to their friends and things like that. Even if you're someone that's looking for an animal that's solely for a display animal, something you know beautiful you can look at in a vivarium, you still probably want an animal that's going to be manageable so that when you're cleaning the cage or moving the animal around, it's not going to bite you and you know damage your hand. So in general, the vast majority of captive bred boas are not really aggressive. So I would say that in my collection, I have maybe two or three animals that I have to be careful when I'm handling in order to not get bitten. Um, but I would say, you know, a, a very small percentage of captive bred boas that you're going to encounter are going to be actively aggressive. The vast majority of them will be food aggressive, though. Um, you know, when you're feeding a snake, that's the number one time that there might be an accident and the snake might bite your hand rather than the food. Um, so most snakes will be food aggressive. I will say, though, that the vast majority are not actively aggressive. And if you even have an animal that is somewhat nervous and aggressive, typically many of these animals will calm down with regular handling, especially if you get them when they're a baby and when they're still young. I want to start with a couple locality boas that are more on the nervous and fast moving side. They're not actually, I won't say they're aggressive, but they're, they don't really like to sit still very much. And this is called a Corn Island boa. This is a dwarf lo uh, locality boa from the Corn Islands off of the coast of Nicaragua. This particular type of boa just uh, cruises around a lot. They don't really like to hold still very much. Um, when I'm handling these animals, it's more like holding a colubrid, like a king snake, than holding a boa. Most of my boas will just kind of chill out and you know, sit still in my hands. All right, these Corn Island boas typically move around quite a bit. I don't think I've ever been actually bitten by them, although this guy has struck out at me a few times. Fortunately, it didn't actually draw any blood. Um, so what's kind of unique about these animals, they have this kind of beautiful uh, olive green uh, coloration on their back and sides, and then their belly has this beautiful... Um, orangish pink coloration. So kind of a you know, cool boa for the locality, obvious. If you're looking for a boa that's going to be a calm pet, this is probably not your uh, best choice, the Corn Island boa. Another locality boa that tends to be more on the nervous and um, fast moving side is known as the Pearl Island boa, boa constrictor sibogue. And this is a semi-dwarf species that's found on an island off the coast of Panama. So similar to the Corn Island boas, these guys are always cruising around and they don't really hold still very much. Um, holding them is like the Corn Island boa, it's more like holding a king snake or a milk snake or something like that rather than holding a boa. Um, you can see they have this really long slender body shape, which is an adaptation for living in the trees. And this is actually one of my more mellow ones. Um, I have a, my large female has actually tried to bite me a few times. I don't think she's actually ever bitten me since I pull my hand away. 
This guy is definitely not aggressive, but he just doesn't like to sit still. So I think the Pearl Island boa is, you know, definitely a cool boa to keep for the locality collector. But for somebody that wants a pet boa that's going to be mellow and they can handle and it'll just kind of hang out, the Pearl Island boa is not a really good choice for them. So next I want to touch on the general behavioral characteristics of the true red tail boas, boa constrictor constrictor. And I was actually going to start this uh, segment off by saying that in general these are not aggressive animals. But actually she just tagged me. You can see some little blood on my arm. And this is the first time this animal has ever bitten me. Um, she's about five and a half years old. Um, so any, you know, the moral is any snake can bite you. You obviously have to be careful. Even a snake that's not been aggressive before can be having a bad day and, you know, turn and bite you like that. So I wanted to say this is a uh, Suriname red tail boa. Um, this girl, even though she's five and a half years old, you can see she's only about four feet. So she's been slow grown, um, but even with that slow, you know, the regimen of feeding that I give, typically the other boas, BCCs, by now are about five to six feet. So I think this is just a animal that's not going to be very big when she, even when she's full grown. Um, but the number one characteristic of the BCC is what I call squeezy. They just really want to hold on tight. I think maybe she bit me because she was a little insecure and she didn't feel like she had the grip on my hand. Um, but you can see she's kind of holding on quite tight. You know, she, it makes it kind of difficult to get her off, even though this animal is only about four feet long. And, you know, she doesn't want to give up that grip. You can see there. And when you put them down, they'll even contort themselves into these, you know, knots and they'll just kind of scrunch themselves up. Um, they just, it kind of gives me this impression that they're just insecure. You know, they just, they really want to grip onto something or they don't feel secure. You can see she's got my hand. Oh, she just struck at me again. So, um, just in time for the camera. But, I mean, the point is, is a BCC is really not the best pet boa for someone that wants a calm pet that they can take out and handle and just chill out with because they tend to be a little more, um, uptight boas, you know, the personality is a little more um, squeezy and, you know, a little more needy as far as, I don't want to say emotionally needy, but um, they're just not the most mellow boa. And of course, like I mentioned before, this is the first time this animal has bitten me. And, um, you know, the vast majority of my BCCs have never bitten me and they're, they don't react aggressively. But in general, they're just not the most mellow boas for someone that wants a, a calm pet. Whoa, she's really, uh, she's really going there. So first time pet owners, you probably want to avoid the BCC, not just for the personality, but you know, for the, the husbandry is much more complicated as well. And I'll get to that in a video sometime in the future. So I went and washed the cut uh, that my that BCC just gave me. Uh, I also want to point out that that boa was in shed. And boas are always a little more irritable when they're in shed, so that may have contributed to why I got bit by her. Uh, so for the rest of the video, I wanted to focus on animals that tend to be a little more mellow and more laid back and general, you know, I would say better pets for people that want a snake that they can handle. And the first is the Bolivian boa, boa constrictor amaryli. So this is a form that's known as the orange crush Bolivian boa. It's a bloodline that was uh, started by a guy named Joe Terry. And so these animals have this beautiful orangey purplish coloration to them. And in general, they seem to me to be the probably the smartest and most responsive boa. Um, when I open their cage, they almost look up at me like they're kind of saying hello to me. Maybe I'm kind of reading into it a bit too much. Um, so I, I, you know, I wouldn't say that they're smart and responsive like a dog, but in terms of, uh, you know, how a boa behaves, you know, I'm inter I interpret their behavior as being more responsive and kind of more connected to the owner. So in general, they're really mellow to take out and hold and they just kind of calmly explore. They don't try to escape. So just a really cool boa for somebody that wants a really calm, chill animal that they can take out. They're not really that easy to find, um, but they are, 
do come on the market occasionally and there are quite a bit of a few dedicated uh, breeders that are working with these guys. Another boa locality with a really laid back personality is called the Paraguanera uh, Peninsula boa from Venezuela. And these are from a peninsula in northwestern Venezuela. Like the Amarali boas, they tend to be pretty mellow when you take them out. They just kind of hang out and, you know, chill out with you. They don't try to escape or bite you or, you know, move fast. Um, they're a little bit more squeezy than those uh, Bolivian boas, I think, because they have a BCC influence. Um, they're kind of a evolutionary um, bridge between the BCI or the BI from um, Central America and the BCC from South America. So they, ha they kind of have traits of both types of boas. But in general, just super cool laid back boa. Um, a rare boa is not easy to find. But if you can find one and you're looking for a super chill pet, the Paraguanera Peninsula boa is one that I would highly recommend. I want to wrap up this video by showing you a couple different locality boas that have a reputation for being aggressive, but I found that that's really not the case. And they're actually some of my most mellow and uh, handleable boas that I have in my collection. This is a, a Terahumara mountain boa from Northern Mexico. And in general, the boas from Mexico and Central America have a reputation for being aggressive. And what's true is they do hiss a lot, especially when they're babies. These Terahumara boas, you know, put up quite a, a loud hiss when they're babies. But I found that they, even though they kind of strike at me, they never actually bite. And it's almost comical to watch. Plus, they're so small that even if they did bite, it would do pretty much absolutely no damage. This is a uh, two and a half year old male. This guy I was born in 2017 and I'm growing him up for future breeding stock. But in general, they're really mellow. I find them, you know, pretty mellow. Um, they hold on, but they don't squeeze the hell out of your hand like a BCC. And they're just a cool boa, you know, to take out and handle because they don't move around too much. They just kind of explore, but not, they don't try to escape or you know, do anything crazy like that. Another boa that has a reputation for aggression, which I haven't found to be the case with my animals, is the Argentine boa, boa constrictor occidentalis. So like the Tarhumara boas, these animals will hiss a lot as babies and they'll strike, but it's really most, more, mostly a bluff since they don't usually bite. Um, and they calm down quite easily with regular handling. My adult animals were never aggressive. They're just really cool, mellow animals to take out. Um, they will hold on, but you can see she's not squeezing my hand with a death grip like a BCC. Just a really cool, neat animal um, to take out and handle and just, you know, to enjoy as a pet. So uh, Argentine boas are probably my all-time favorite locality boa and, you know, a form of a locality boa that I highly recommend to somebody that's looking for a cool pet boa. So the last point I want to make in this video is that for many people that are looking for their first pet boa, they're going to either get a morph boa or they're going to get a, a normal Colombian pet store type boa. And these animals in general have a lot of uh, Colombian ancestry. Often, you know, they're not pure, they're mixed um, of, of several different localities. This particular animal is a, a Moran junglo, um, but these animals in general tend to be quite mellow and docile. Morph boas and you know most of the pet shop type boas, they've been in captivity for more generations than the pure locality boas. So many of them could be accurately be described as domesticated animals at this point um, in their relationship with humans. So in general, if you get one of these boas, if you want a pet, they would probably make a good choice for a pet because it's a, they tend to be mellow animals that you can take out and handle quite easily. So I hope that gives you a general idea of some of the differences in personality and behavior between the different types of locality boas. Always remember though that every boa is an individual and just because an animal is of a given locality doesn't mean it's going to act like other boas of that locality. 
If you like this video, please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel. If you have any questions or comments, you can write them in the comments section below or feel free to reach out to me. Um, thank you for tuning in and enjoy your Boas.